Impact Theory Comics is a new independent publisher, and they're releasing their first comic, Neon Future. The comic is a collaboration with world-famous DJ and producer Steve Aoki, and it's written by the Eisner Award-winning writer of Justice from DC Comics, Jim Kruger. With artwork by Neil Edwards and Jeremy Rapik, the artwork and story are absolutely mind-blowing. If you like science fiction, you're going to love this comic, so head over to your local comic store or Comics Conspiracy and get Neon Future issue number one on your pull list ASAP. And while you're at it, if you have Instagram, you can see some of the artwork for yourself. It's at IT Comics on Instagram. Hey everyone, this is Ryan Higgins at the Comic Conspiracy Podcast. Uh, you may notice a bit of a difference in our normal audio quality for the first 17 minutes or so of this podcast as we inadvertently were recording off the wrong microphone, but instead of uh, deleting and redoing a bunch of uh, wonderful talk about Tom King and his run on Batman, we figured out we're just going to run with the audio that was there, and then we're just going to pick up our conversation uh, with the correct mic, which is what we have now. So hopefully um, this is all recording properly this time. I'll check it right now before we go on. But uh, yeah, keep a li- uh, yeah, just keep listening, and we'll uh, get through the first seventeen minutes, and then everything goes back to normal. Okay, bye. Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode four hundred and three for the week of March twenty eighth, uh, March May twenty eighth, two thousand and nineteen. My name is Ron Thoreau and March. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Brock Sager, Kevin, and Charlie. All right, your levels are good, Kevin. You may be a little quiet. Let me turn you on. Make sure you actually. Recorded. All right, there you go. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, I'm not sure Brock will roll his eyes and have some Brockism to, to say at the end of this, but this might be a very short podcast. We actually don't have much to talk about this yeah, week. Good luck with that. We've been super, super busy with a lot of other stuff. So uh, sorry if this clocks in as like one of our shorter episodes, but uh, we do have one. They, they're getting an episode. They should just be happy, right? One big news story to talk about, one big comic book to talk about. And some listener questions, so we're going to get to that stuff. Uh, it's fifth week. It's kind of unquiet. It's holiday weekend. Yeah, kind of quiet, except for what's coming out tomorrow. Well, but, but what's one of the things we talked about? Um, I've been gone. Galaxy far, far away. <laughs> to a place that you don't remember the name of. You guys have all been working and doing stuff. So um, There was one big story from this past week, though, that we need to cover extensively from the start to the end. And that is Tom King... Our buddy Tom King, and then and, the, and the, the whatever the hell happened last week with him PR on Batman. Fiasco. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of stuff. So let's let's go through this uh, kind of kind of one, one step at a time. Let's a little, one step at a time. Let's go through what happened right. here. Um, now we've talked about bleeding cold many times on this podcast. Um, you may have heard me talk about them less recently, only because. Uh, you know, don't hold back. I felt like they were doing okay. No, I understand the creators and the companies were mad at at leaks and rumors. I, understandable, right? Yeah. Um, but I never, I never really felt it was. I don't know. I just never felt like it was done in malice. I, I, I mean, I guess it is, but it never really came off that way. Um, well, there's, there's, there's breaking something that that could possibly be newsworthy or, or they're just flat out just stating something to see what shit you can stir. Well the the spin and the 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 negative attitude towards so much of bleeding pool these days, and this extends far past due terror and my problems with a few of the specific people on the site. Um, it's led to some really shitty situations, including what happened with Tom King. Yeah. So they post uh, an article that said that uh Tom King is Wednesday, right? Was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah. I think it was Wednesday. We didn't talk about it last week. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So it would have been Wednesday morning. Wednesday, yeah, it would have been Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Or, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, yeah. That Tom King was uh, being let go from the Batman title. And he was going to finish up early. I believe it issue 85. So end of the year. End of the year. Um, that's a pretty severe accusation uh, nah, accusation not the right word. It's a pretty severe claim to make, right? When you're you're saying that the you know the biggest writer in comics is having his book stripped out from underneath him, and he doesn't get to finish his story. Yeah. Uh, so myself and a lot of people were like, "Well, that's total bullshit," obviously, right? Um, Tom King tweeted some kind of vague, like, "Oh, thanks everyone for the for the the good like the good words." Yeah, yeah, for the good support. thoughts. 
yeah, we'll you know have more to say later. Which kind of like ew, when it's not a denial, you kind of like oh. Um, well, and the, the other difficult part is is Tom has been very open in interviews and yeah. like online with fans and stuff, and even at conventions like of what his plans are. Like he's he's planned through one hundred. Like well, and not just Tom King. It's been stated by. Video and like yeah. other people have talked about what his plans are. And there was just an article the other day, I like like week and a half, two weeks ago or so at this point, that he said that he was surprised that DC okayed yeah. his kind of final pitch for the series. Yeah. So as far as we're concerned, everything's going according to plan. Yeah. His runs being well, and the the other thing too that was really shitty about the art, the article that we were dropped was that they're like, oh, some exec are mad about the sales, like the sales chart number right. for Batman. It's like, it's the, like you pointed out, it's the top selling comic <laughs> since it, it. Batman has been since Scott Snyder took over the number one ongoing superhero comic. So we're talking now eight years straight. Yeah. Some comic books have sold more for an issue or two. Well, it's been in the top ten like for every like single years issue, yeah. every single month. Right. It is, you know, again, uh, Doomsday Clock outsells it. It's a miniseries. Yeah. Uh, War of the Realms outsells it. It's an event book. A number right? one of a new book outsells right. it because of freaking so many variant covers. And right. Covers. Exactly. No book sells as well as Batman. And that is, you know, between well, Scott's... now it's only Batman's twice a month. Yeah, exactly. Like, and so even if the numbers are, you know, the amount of Batman shipping a month is outsells every, almost every single book every single month if you combine those two numbers, right? Uh, so the the fact that they were going to drop them due to poor sales is is fucking lunacy. Uh, you know, this is just, you know, and again. So one of the things that really struck me odd about the article also was that this all broke at a convention. Yeah, yeah. Like, to me, wasn't that the Orlando Con? Right yeah, I don't remember. But like, yeah. I, I don't immediately think that's where DC would be making changes like that. No. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, when they meet up with retail, when they meet up with um with with uh if if the um creative teams and editorial teams are there and they have a meeting because they're yeah. just together and they come up with ideas, I mean that happens. Yeah. So it's possible. But it seems weird based on the conversations they had just had, right? That yeah. this whole last idea was going was gonna to happen. Well, the first thing I thought because of that recent story is I wonder if some exec freaked out at those statements and wanted to know what was going on. And I mean, maybe. Because right? that, was, that was the first thing that came to my mind is I, I couldn't think of it being something which wasn't a reactionary decision yeah. when this first broke. Yeah. So... Uh, well, and the funny thing about sales, too, the sales have been going down a little bit during this nightmare arc. I know some people have been dropping off the series, but we're just getting into the City of Bane, which is going to be like the, one of the bigger well, final pushes. Well, the thing is, is, this is the same thing that happened with Steiner's run during um, Zero Year. Zero Year, right, like, right, like right. right. You had a huge, like a lull because people were like, oh, this is taking forever to tell yeah, the story. Yeah. And it's like he well, was telling a Zero Year story, and then what do we go into? Endgame with like Joker and all this right. big books stuff. just. That's just the nature of the beast, right? It goes up and down. And I, to this, I will defend Nightmares. Oh, Nightmares is great. It's fantastic. Again, and we're going to talk about Heroes in Crisis a little bit later. Very similar problems that people just aren't willing to give the story, the, the entire story, a shot. They're confu- And I was confused one one and two issues. And I was like, what the hell is going on with this? I asked Tom King. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. And every issue is built on the previous issue. And it's, I think it is the... Uh, uh, the the perfect example of how to do both a single issue story and an ongoing story in modern comics mm-hmm. because you have a background arc, but so much is accomplished in that single issue for this sort of alternate reality that Batman's kind of caught in, right? Where it's just jumping around between. Well, the thing is, is is, is what you're talking about with nightmares is, is nightmares. We got those those two issues of just chaos. Right? Yeah, it was the yeah, yeah. the Professor Big, yeah, and yeah. who what was the other one? The other one? Was Pig and Damien, and then John Constantine was in John there. John Constantine was in there, and then at the end of the John Constantine one, it starts, it starts uh, to yeah. like that's where yeah. you start. So <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Like, I, I will be the first one to admit I don't necessarily enjoy that arc as much as some of the other arcs that King has done. 
that being said, I could see it being a little jarring considering yeah. the issue that led before Nightmares. Because oh, it had the big cliffhanger. That's, and that's the entire point, right? Yeah. Is that he's captured, all this stuff happens to him, but we pick up when Batman's going through this, yeah. like, this fucking fear, toxin, yeah. nightmare, that we just don't know what's happening. And we are as confused as he are. And I think that's an interesting concept. And I see, I see this so often where just because you don't understand it right away, these are long form serial yeah. books. Just give it some time. If you've trusted the 80 yeah, or the 70 but, issues prior. So part of it kind of goes into one, obviously expectations. Two, it's the Kevin jumping here whenever you're ready. Too, by the way. Oh, well I was there. I'm, there's a level of, I didn't mean to cut Charlie off. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I thought you were trying to cut Charlie. No, 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 no. But there's a, a level of, excitement around finally getting some payoff from hints and stuff that yep. happened for basically since the wedding issue yep. where you saw sort of Thomas Wayne and well, that kind of stuff. I mean, and have... then you don't get that interaction between those characters that the previous issue kind of led you to believe. Right. Were. Right. Yeah, well, I mean the end of, at the end of um, issue 50 with that last panel yeah. where we have all of these people gathered behind Bane and you're like, okay, it's virtually thread that you're just like, I need to know what happens. It's every what character, happens. right? And, and you're just like, and not, you're into nightmares in the '60s, and you have the only thing you've seen is Thomas. Yeah, like you haven't seen anything else that 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 those threads are there, and it's. I think. I mean, I understand people not liking it, but again, I think that, like you said, they need to give this type of story, and especially King is his writing style. You need to give him. He has more breadth. And so you, you have to read a little bit more to, to to have something revealed to you versus... Yeah, some of my favorite issues of Tom King have been the issues where, quote-unquote, nothing happened. But, okay. I don't disagree that some of the best issues have been ones where, quote-unquote, nothing happened. But they also tend to be very character-driven, right. where you kind of have, I don't even, more of like, I don't want to say the emotional beat, but it's, it's sort of like the double date with... Lois yeah, and yeah, yeah. So my favorites. Like, there's a lot there, which is more about sort of the character interactions between those people and how they interact and that yep. kind of thing. Like Where two. I feel like yep. Nightmares, while I enjoyed it, I didn't get the payoff of the character interactions that I was looking for. Partly because all those character interactions are in Batman's mind. Yeah, yeah. I haven't read Nightmares, so I can't comment. Yeah. I remember you're off this podcast. Get out. <sighs> Two weeks ago, we were sitting at this table playing guessing games about what is the thing that he can't believe that they approved. Yeah. I remember all these wild guesses thrown out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if we'll ever <laughs> know the answer to that. So we have we have the the guess. Well, we will. We'll wait, talk wait, about wait, that wait, in a second. We're finishing up the timeline. So we we have oh, the yes. two questions. We have the two questions that we will figure out in the next like year is. What is the most important scene ever in an X Men comic that's coming up very soon? That is more important than X Men number one, Giant Size X Men number one, and New, new X Men. And then what was so drastic that Tom King pitched that that he was blown away that DC accepted? It? And apparently we're going to find both out. So, 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 are you sure we're going to? Yeah, that's what I was going to. Do you think we're going to find out the Tom King thing? Yes. And we'll, okay, we'll get there in a second. We'll get there in a few minutes. So, so internet is a fire. Like everybody's like, yeah. Pissed off. So Mitch, Gerards, Gerards. I never know how to pronounce Gerard. the last name. Gerard. It's not Gerards. Gerard. 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 Yeah, that's okay. the thing. That, Damn you, Mitch. Um, hey, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I can't wait for Toby to hear that. Um, Does he even listen? I think so. Yeah, when he's not on. I think even when he is on, he listens. Uh, so he tweets out like this super cryptic, like. Like, you know, jumping to conclusions, animated GIF, and like, you know, oh, if only you knew the things that I knew. So, yeah, which people yeah. are like, so is he off the book? Like, what the fuck is going on? And, of course, my instant reaction is, you know, this sucks that Bleeding Cool puts DC in this position, but people obviously... Oh, you get featured in an article again? Probably. God damn you, I've, Higgins. I've lost count. <laughs> um, uh, did I? I really don't know. Oh, later, yes, later, later, it. later, <laughs> later, I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, th- I, th- I, th- I thought you meant about that one. No. Uh, well, the, the, the problem is when Bleeding Cool brings this up and the creators are instantly like, no, and they don't shut it down, like speculation goes wild. So we found out the next day. 
It was Thursday. No, Friday. We no, found out Friday. Yeah. Right. I, it was when I was at Disneyland. Yeah, it was when I was Friday at Friday because I was Galaxy's like, Edge. I was like, oh, look, I know something before Higgins does. <laughs> I go to Star Wars Land for like five hours and Tom King's new book gets announced. What the hell is wrong with the world? So um, Friday afternoon, they announced what's happening. Yes. Tom King and Clay Mann are going to wrap up their run on Batman, or his run with Tom King's run on Batman. I don't know. Did they say, is it 15 issues? Did they give it a number? They said 12. 12? Okay. For what? So that does bring it, that brings it under 100 issues. Yes. Um, so that brings it 85, 81, so 90, 93 issues, if no, I'm not mistaken. No, he's only 85 on Batman. Right. But yeah, he, but only, he 12, only did 80, so three less. but he only did 81 of those issues. Remember, oh, Joshua the Williamson. Price, the, the, go to the, the, price, the price and the button. Yeah. So it is still like maybe ten issues under what he yeah. his kind of plan was, but uh, well, if only we could know in those ten issues. They're they're gonna have a a uh, Batman Catwoman uh, Max and twelve. Issues. Yeah, team up book is not quite the right word, but but and that makes sense. But clearly. The end of the Bane, City of Bane arc will be him, I'm assuming, defeating Bane. And now the wrap-up is all the stuff with Catwoman. Now, whether they get married, whether they break up, I, I mean, we don't know, right? Um, uh, Dan Didio and the DC Retailer Facebook group, they had uh, uh, they had a post where they said, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about this very soon. He's off the book at the end of the year, but very soon you'll have more information on this. So, uh here is the story as DC has told us, and again, I don't know. Could there be some like behind the scenes? Oh, we like some of it, we don't like some of it. Oh, let's spruce it up. Oh, let's make it an event book. Oh, let's relaunch. I mean, I'm sure, of course. Yeah, I mean, it, the the thing is, is there could be I, some of that. I, I think I think Blaine Cole's article that talked about the execs talking about how I don't buy that for a second. I don't buy it for a second, but, you know... No one to fucking AT&T about. gives a shit what Tom King's Batman story is. Is it selling well? That's all they care about, right? It's not selling as well as that War of Rome. So, here is what's going on. Charlie? I was just going to say, I agree with that to a point, because there's been plenty of times when they've done something in comic books or whatnot, <laughs> and then other parts of the agency found out and went, crap, this is going to fuck up toy sales, or this is going to... Yeah, I think it's all disconnected at this point. Yeah, but that being said, it based on Batman Damned... Well, that's and, a little different. Well, no, but based on Batman Damned, there was a lot of sort of reevaluating the Black Label line yeah. and all that. Or DC's that had, that had horrible editorial stuff with cancellations, yeah, the, the yeah. Batman Dam thing, like... There's been a lot of kind of internal stuff that we haven't seen going on. And because nothing is really clarified or given, you know, at least. I'm just wondering if Tom King inadvertently put a spotlight on himself by going out saying, I can't believe they greenlit what I want to do. (laughs) It's possible. So, Ryan, what was DC's official story in the retailer group about what happened with Tom King? Ah, yes. Uh, as clarity comes over the podcast. Yeah, suddenly um, my head feels clearer. <laughs> I just <laughs> um, don't feel like I'm trapped in something. So, uh, DC's retailer formed in DDO and the people there said, here's what's going on. They've been wanting to end the uh, double shipping that DC's had on the remaining books for a little while now. That was never the implant. That was never the plan to keep it going this long but hey money all right so it's uh batman flash wonder woman justice league uh detective Uh, Detective. yes so sometime early next year all these books will be dropping their double shipping uh obviously in the case of batman the sales are so good they clearly want another book to take to take its place of the missing issue so while there will be technically two issues of batman a month it'll be two separate series yeah Tom King's run is has been so strong. They want to continue that, so they're going to keep the Tom King book uh, going as Batman Catwoman, and then a new creative team will come in to do the second title. A lot of rumors that that may be where the Warren Ellis story goes, because he's been apparently working on a miniseries in the background. That could be a cool 12 issues, if they just have Warren Ellis do 12 issues. Um, and then someone takes over around issue 100 for a brand new creative team. Uh, we don't know. We don't know any of this, anything of exactly what's going on, but we'll find out, uh, you know, into next year. Yeah. 
this was ready, this was planned, this was the plan the whole time. A lot like Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin, they wanted to take his t- spin him off the main book and give him kind of an event wrap up thing. You have Batman and Robin, then you return to Bruce Wayne. Similar idea here with Batman and Catwoman. So let me ask you this as a retailer. Yeah. Will this affect your order numbers having the Batman Catwoman, especially starting issue one? Do you expect you're going to order more of that than you would have if it was just the next issue Being of Batman? It was, it, Batman 86. Well, it especially if it was just the same number of covers, since chances are there will be a bunch of variants. Yeah, and it depends what the book is, right? It depends if, if they pitch it as this very – it is the end of his arc, but it is also a kind of – standalone Batman Catwoman adventure doing their things. Yeah. I mean, I could see selling equivalent, if not more. Right. Um, You know, number ones do help sales and, you know, I don't, there's very few creators, if any, that could take over Batman that would bring the same amount of sales to it. But I think, you know, enough people will continue it for a little while under a new creative team, especially if it is Warren Ellis or someone of of a a bigger name. Well, I I guess Mike here. So I don't expect you're going to, you may get a bump from a new creative team on Batman. I could see you ordering a bit more of that. I'm well, more curious about the Batman Catwoman series. If you think this will be a equivalent replacement to Batman yeah. sales. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't think we'd ever get a bump on Batman. If anything, it would just stay flat or well, drop I'm a just, little bit. I'm just curious because especially if you kind of put the Batman Catwoman up against – say, the Batman Who Laughs miniseries or right. some of this other stuff. Like, every month when we talk about Batman sales, a lot of times Batman's not the top Batman book in the sales chart. Right, right. There's still but, other Batman titles that chart higher but, than but, it. But those are always kind of these event, these little event miniseries. And again, yeah. if you take the two issues and combine them, they do sell more, right? Yes, but I'm curious if you think Batman Catwoman will hit numbers greater than the main batman title uh number one will number one will the rest probably equivalent i would think anyone going in is going to order Anyone who's been reading batman will get batman and catwoman yeah whether or not they stick with the actual batman title that's the question that's the question can we go back to the official story for a moment yeah because there's something that's i'm finding a missing link in the chain here okay this was the plan all along quote unquote (laughs) is about the double shipping is that what you meant when you said this was the plan all along? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. So when they started – so go back to the beginning of Rebirth. Yeah. The idea was double shipping was only supposed to last for a few months till all their books started coming out. And they were they were only going to happen for the first six months maybe. But the sales were so strong and reaction was so positive to it overall. Now, some people did tell me they're happy it's ending because of how expensive it gets. It gets. Yeah. But I – Overall, double shipping has been a huge boon from DC because it, they sell more comics, just straight more comics. So once that plan happened and they said, hey, we're going to keep these books double shipping. Are you guys good to go? You know, when Tom King said, well, I'm 30 issues out in my planning. Sure, I can do this, right? And we're just got to get ahead. Um, uh, at some point, Aquaman – uh, Titans, Teen mm. Titans, these books started dropping from double shipping, right? Slowly but surely, Harley all Queen those – Harley, right? All these books just boom, 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 started dropping as new miniseries and specials started coming out. Superman Action did it with Bendis. Yeah, yeah. So that was a big switch over there. So at some point, DC said, okay, end of 2019, we are ending all the double shipping books or whatever it ends up being, right? January, February or December. You know, We're not 100% sure. They, they haven't given us a firm date yet. But the plan – for the past however many months they've had this, yes, the plan was we were going to end the double shipping books. We still want the Tom King Batman book, clearly, because this is going to we're going to end this before his run ends, and we don't want to drag but Tom I mean, King's run out for another two years, three years. So, off mic, away from press, yeah. just like in a moment of total clarity, King was pushed off the book. Or this was all some grand plan that we just didn't know about? I don't know. I mean, well, I don't think... I know, but what's a pop culture podcast without wild speculation? Yeah. Well, the, well, well Ble- Bleeding Cool says he was pushed off the book. Yeah. I don't think he was pushed off the book. Again, it just he, seems weird to no, talk I, all this I, talk about going to 105. Well, I'm sure that was the plan before DC said... Well, I think that... 
that's the weird. thing is, is I, I think that the plan was in place for 105. That's what T- King has talked about. That's what everybody who's been yeah, associated with Yeah, so when did Batman, it change? But that's the when thing they is, said they're going to drop the, the double shipping. Is, is, I, I don't think it was when they dropped the double shipping because well, yeah. if, if they dropped the double shipping, it just his run goes on for another, what, year? Uh, but, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think they want his run to go on. Uh, it, it, worked to, it worked 100 issues when it's double shipping. That is a long goddamn time. So I expect the Batman Catwoman, they might be oversized. They might be 30 pages, right? Again, if you're trying to squeeze all that extra content into those books, they could be longer, right? So I just don't believe that they're going to be that uh, – uh, uh, it wouldn't make sense if suddenly this was like a 25-issue run because, well, why not just keep it in the main book at that point? I expect that we're going to make Batman Catwoman well, the wrap-up as sort of like an event that, book, quote-unquote. But that's the thing is, is, is you look at it from – the point of, okay, well, we're ending double shipping. We don't want him to take as long to finish up his run. Okay, fine. That part I kind of understand. But the it, the drop, the, the just shoving it over to Batman Catwoman, which is going to run the, almost the same amount of time. Well, well, no, it's not. It's going to run – it's the same amount of time but not the same amount of issues. But again, we have Grant Morrison, right? I mean they, both Tom King and DC have the same response of, you know, look at what Grant Morrison did. He was on the main book. He set up his major story. It whoops, it moved over then to to Batman and Robin to continue the story. We're doing the same thing where we set up the main story in Batman and we're going to Batman Catwoman to finish our the runoff, right? Now, again, it, any other – you know, go back 10 years, 15 years, it would have finished in the main book. But that's just not how they do stuff now. They push stuff off in the miniseries and event books. And So for me, the the only misstep that I think has caused a lot of this jumping to conclusions is the 105 number wasn't just sort of thrown out at issue 50. It's been right, consistently right. Yeah. brought up right. even as of weeks ago right so it seems very well, that's, the, that, that's the thing is the time it's it's hard not to consider this a very quick very odd switch over because the messaging True. changed overnight and you would think they would have known this a little bit farther out in advance oh, i'm sure tom king was like hey yeah you want to end double shipping but you know, can we keep mine going till my run's over? Because, you know, and I'm wondering on Josh Williamson on Flash, T. Right? I mean, we were just talking to him. He's got a lot of plans coming up. Uh, is he off the book when it uh, drops the double sh- single shipping? Is there going to be a second Flash book? Because clearly, Flash, Batman, Wonder Woman, these are some of their good selling titles. Uh, Superman, it is now fairly apparent that well, I'd the, say Justice League over Wonder Woman. Well, well, but ju- I get, well, Justice League too, right? What is these are going to be? Oh, JSA, there's your second Justice League book, right? <laughs> Action and Superman, you wonder why you dropped double shipping, but now we have the Lois and Jimmy book. So I'm sure that was a plan like, hey, we're going to drop this, but we have plans for down the road. For, for me, it's one of those things where... To fill in those missing titles. For me, it harkens back to one of those things where, like Charlie said, it's been known for so long at this 105 marker, 100, 105 issues is the goal. Right. Um, you know, we talked to Williamson. He has his plans out for, you know, for Exum, yeah. whatever. It's really great that that happens. The problem is, is you're going to stop double shipping. We want to stop double shipping. OK, like you're you're doing this absolute cutoff for all the books now at double shipping. It, it doesn't make much sense to me. It, the, it doesn't make much sense because it's like, well, why don't you just keep Batman double shipping until he's done? What we just said. I, but you know, that's the what, thing is, it runs eight issue, eight months. It doesn't run for 15 months. It runs for eight months or seven months if you're double shipping it. No, I mean, he would have had another 20 issues on the on the book, which would have been 10 months. If they're going 12 issues with this, it could be that they're going to be oversized. So they're going to they're going to move those 20 issues into a 12 issue uh, oversized, you know, 30 page book. Or they're just saying, hey, you lose eight issues. Sorry. Right. Well, and that's uh, the thing that we don't know. Right. What, we don't know what exactly is going. Look, we don't know those specifics are going in. So it's still one of those things where, wait, because they don't want to double ship. It's that's what's causing this. But that's okay. I can't wait to just be like, it's been a long time since a Batman title. <laughs> <laughs> well, the things we do know is the DC and Tom King have both said that they are launching a Batman Catwoman book, and DC has specifically said it is because they are ending the double shipping. Now you can conspiracy theorize all you want that there's more stuff going on to it but to me it just feels like 
We've heard this from DC. We've heard this from Didio that they wanted to end the double shipping for a while. It makes sense. What? Should they have been more upfront about it? Should they have been more public about it? Should they have immediately announced Batman Catwoman once Bleeding Cool broke that story? These are all things, yes, they should have. I would say I wouldn't say they f- fucked up, but they definitely were like. Well, DC has a uh, has a but, really a great track the, record of fucking up well, PR. The, the a, problem a is you have an exclusive deal that's being ironed out with Newsarama or with Variety or with Entertainment Weekly or whatever. Right? It doesn't matter what the, what the site is. Your deal is okay. You are going to be the company that announces Tom King's Batman Catwoman book. We're going to it's a it launches in January. Previews for January shipping books is November. We're going to announce this in October, right? Or so like they're early, already like in the summer, like like Comic Con. Sh- they're or, already like, lining up the details to get this PR stuff out there, and then boom, this rumor hits. So what do they have to do? Right? They have to go to the company. Go sorry, like we're pulling the exclusive. Oh well, you know. I mean, I, so I understand, right, that these things happen, but they do need to address these things. I think quicker. Even if DC was just like, hey, guys, I know you're concerned about Tom King. We have a lot of plans. We're not ready to talk about him yet, but don't worry. His run is going to be completed. Like that's all they have to say. All the all yeah, the official no, yeah. announcements. Like a, and if, like a, just a really quick blurb about Tom King's not leaving Batman. He's not being pushed off of yeah, Batman. We yeah. have plans going forward for Tom King in the DC universe. He will finish his run. Like, like yeah, just yeah. basically they need to pay you for that. That's um, what I just said. <laughs> So all except for the pay, the pay me pay part. part. Yeah. <laughs> Going forward, as a let me ask you as a retailer. Yeah. Although you could answer it as a fan. The next creative team on Batman needs to be superstars, or the Batman book has enough cachet on its own that you could just plug in a I don't want to say a nobody, but like a mid level writer. Uh, I, no. I like I like the rumor that Warren Ellis is Batman miniseries. So you get becomes a run ten and, issues of Warren Ellis on Batman. And then you have to go back to the well again. I think you get fifteen issues through issue one hundred, and then there's a big issue one hundred will be a big issue with the new creative team. I, I could see that being, I could see that being. The, I mean, could the story, uh, okay? I hate to even say a name, but this is not to denigrate this guy at all. He was my trivia partner at Comic Con last <laughs> summer. Mark Andreco is a yeah. new writer on Batman. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, it's, is that a big enough name? Yeah. To it's not a the thing is, is he's not a big enough name in the industry, but I think with people that are no comic books like a little bit more will be like, Oh yeah, he's a perfect fit for I'm I'm just saying, book. do you have to cast a superstar to take over you know, after King? And, and and God, I don't want to bring up Bleeding Cool, but their <laughs> their line was, you know, it's gotta be Bendis. Because they paid a shitload to get him away from Marvel, and Superman books aren't burning up the sales charts, but they never were going to, so I don't know. No. Like, that couldn't have been the process. So they're going to give him Batman because they've got to they've got to make it, you know, the money work. And to me, like, that all seems like nonsense. It, yeah, I understand you need that quick buck up front, but you've got to be looking at this stuff long term. You've got to be looking at what can a guy like Bendis and his properties do for you over five years, over ten years. Well, the thing is, is Bendis' Superman in action aren't... And it's not just Bendis. It's his friends. He comes with a lot of people attached to him that are all starting to work for DC again, right? So the Jimmy Olsen, the Lois Lane books, those would not have happened if Bendis didn't come over. Right, yeah. the creative team's on those. You're not getting Rucka back to do a regular a regular book if Bendis isn't there leading no, leading the, the fight. Right, you might get so, Rucka to do a Batman. Well, sure, get fucking get Bendis and, or get Brubaker and oh, uh, and Rucka back to, to co write <laughs> oh, Batman. Oh God, yes. Yeah. And shit, if there's anyone that could get him to do it, it'd be someone like Bendis, right? Yeah. So, um, I could see there's a couple names that I think would be fitting, right? But again. Tom King wasn't Tom King before we took over Batman. Now, we all loved him, right? Same with Snyder. Scott Snyder wasn't Scott Snyder till he took over. So the Batman can make your can make your career, right, if you've got a pitch. Um, I was more thinking in terms of from the DC point of view. But I think they get a big name to to, to That's what kind I mean. of ride the yeah. wave till you get to 100, and then you do something then. Um yeah, it's also an easier sell with some of the names they could get to be like, we just need you to do 
I, I, this many issues. You can't even make Batman a jam book and do three, four short stories yeah. with some high tier creative teams, yeah. you know, yeah. and 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 just be like, hey, we're going to do some kind of Tales of the Dark Knight for a few issues, yeah, and from then like, boom, from like ninety to here's our big story. Well, yeah, you commit like Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch do, yeah. Three issues, <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right, and it's a story. Just get Frank then, Miller in to do one issue, oh and it's God. like it just it'll go. Why did the sales plummet right? on this? Issue? No, F- no, dude, it, dude. If Frank Miller came back to legitimately do like two issues of Batman, you mean with Brian uh, with Azarello? It doesn't matter. It, sales <laughs> would just through the roof, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if it what he what he's there for. It's just he's, he's still such a such a big name. So yeah, there's plenty of options that they could they could do with um. Uh, uh, with the main Batman title, um, but no, it, it, it makes stars, right? I think it's like it's almost a waste to put a star on Batman because it's going to sell anyway, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you can make your next big name on that. I book. mean, I I could see them doing the big creative teams just to make the March to one hundred, yeah, huge, big, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like. Instead of trying to cram it all into like a Detective One Thousand, I could see them ba- trying to space it out to build up to ba- it. Batman selling eighty five, ninety thousand copies at its lowest point right now. You don't get much higher than that on a monthly comic book. A if mo- you if monthly comic by the same general creative yeah. team, with only, no one, well, yeah. no one comes close. Like, but but do covers, you, no. but, so in terms of what we were talking about, like if you really go for the well of rock stars for three or four issues each. That's different, though. Do yeah. you think you could crack a lot higher than that if it wasn't – like, it's still the monthly Batman title. Yeah, but you're not going to get those guys to do 80 issues. That's the problem, right? Well, if, that's why I'm saying not 80 issues. I'm just saying, like yeah. – Hush is, like, the the sort of the minimal you yeah. need. That's the minimum yeah, like, amount it's like, yeah, it's like of a like, run. It's 12 issues. 12 issues. Or, no. 11? No. But I'm not talking about a run. 19, I'm just saying, yeah, 11, like, 11. Yeah. You, you throw out names like Rucka and Brubaker and Ellis, and, like, a lot of these people have worked on Batman or Batman, don't want to say offshoot titles, but you know yeah, what I yeah, mean. Yeah, like the, the related yeah. titles. I could see them doing the, this is the year we're going to revisit the All-Stars just to try and get, like, Batman would consistently sort of be the number two spot or the number one spot. But I also if think if you release that properly, if you release an issue of Batman, an issue of Batman Catwoman, a a a, a Dark Knight four by Frank Miller, and a Warren Ellis Batman book the same That's month, true. all four of them will be in the top ten. Right? That's true. Like you don't, you almost, you don't need. You don't need them. to put them on Batman. That's I very mean, true. I mean, you should, you should put big creative teams on your big books. But you should also yeah. let those big books make a big creative team. Well, no, you so. have a you have a really good point there of the Batman title itself. God, look at Deceased, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's like the number one book. That's gonna be that's a huge Deceased, book. Yeah. It's not technically a Batman book, but it's yeah. it's Batman focused, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, all, there's a lot of big books, that, and Batman carries a lot of these titles. Batman is California, as as, <laughs> as Bryce likes to remind us. Um, yeah, so it'd be really curious. I'll be you know. It's, I mean, if you look at our state, we almost look like a battering. It'll be sad to see him off Batman, but I'm very excited for Batman Catwoman, and hopefully this appeases the the people that were super concerned about Tom King being off Batman. He's not off Batman. They're just moving, moving him in. to Well, the thing is, he's, a special he's book working on other projects as well. Yeah. Like, there's so more it's stuff not, happening. It's not, yeah. like there's, yeah. it's not like this is the only thing. Like, I think what freaked people out was they're booting him off, and he's not going to be working right, for, right. for DC well, and, like, and the worst was the haters that you're like, yeah, we did it. We got him off Batman. It's like a fuck off. Like, it, you no, know you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, again. Because my, my curiosity is, what if they put him on, like, what if they legitimately took him to Superman and Superman became a top 10 title? Like, Dude, I mean, it's been forever we, since. I, 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 I sent everyone that gets Batman. I signed them up for uh, – we contacted through Comic Cub and I signed them up for Superman was uh, Up and Away. Right? Up and Away, the, yeah, Tom the, King the Tom King one from And Walmart. I set up everyone that gets uh, action in Superman for Bendis's Batman, Batman yeah. book. And I said, hey, guys, here's what happened. Did these miniseries – whoops, were they – I just keep hitting my mic tonight. Were they switched, created, were they switched titles, right? There's a six-issue miniseries. Let me know if you want it. I mean, again, all I had a handful of people drop it, but almost everyone's getting yeah. them. So we are going to have a v- – you know, I mean, again, it'd probably be a Mr. Miracle thing where we 
outsell the kind of the national audience uh, uh, percentage. But you're going to get a top Superman book by King with that miniseries. Yeah, you so. can. Yeah. And there's a lot of interest in that because you know the amount of people that were able to pick up those Walmart issues is you know zero yeah. right? or two people per per, per Gage store. got them. He was yeah. really good at that. Yeah, a couple of them, a few of them, not most of them. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but you were featured in a news article <laughs> yet again. Sure. What did I do this time? I don't remember. When, oh, when well, you but, when you tweeted out what the retailer forum had, had said. Yeah, yeah. No, about about them dropping the double shipping. So that is again, if you're a big fan of the double shipping, like I am, both. As a reader and as someone who sells them, um, I think it's unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, if we get more titles because of it, if that's five more awesome books that we get because of those five books are going single shipping. So we get Batman, Catwoman, uh, JLA gives us JSA, Wonder Woman, you're carrying a rolling. And December, December, right? If it all stops in December, January is a perfect month for all the post uh, Doomsday Clock books to launch, right? The Bendis Legion. Bendis Legion, right? That's why oh, I don't God, think he's no. going to Batman. <laughs> no Bendis yeah, Legion. Yeah. No, oh, no Bendis I will Legion. take a Bendis Legion. You can't oh, do team hell. books. What are you talking <laughs> about? He's so good on like single characters, but his team books are... Ugh. He's good on... New Avengers, uh, dude, Defenders, uh, one of my favorite books. Uh, I, I, man, I wish he stayed on Defenders longer. That was such a good title. Um, so small groups. The yeah, Legion is really Legion's big. But you have a core, right? You have a core team. Um, yeah, what else is missing? Uh, they're reintroducing Spectre in an upcoming arc of Detective. Oh. Very excited for reintroducing. that. Reintroducing? I didn't know that character was gone. Well, well you know, I mean, I mean not has the... he appeared in... Spectre? It, like, just like Dark. Maybe the he's current in, one. He's in uh, Heroes in Crisis. A kind, a little bit. One panel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's there, he's there. Much like Major well, X uh, in that uh, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why they introduced um, him in there. Because I'm trying to think of. Spe- no, I mean, I mean, I think Spectre was in. The, he, I think he was in. The he Justice was in the Dark thing. New Fifty Two Justice League Dark. I believe. I but think it was in this one. I, I don't think he's been in because re- the magic is all screwed up for like a half yeah, a second. He's like yeah. for half a second. So a full arc with 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 Spectre in Detective, which is I you know I would love more yeah more of those books out there. Um, yeah, uh, I, I I don't want to say anything because it's a kind of a spoiler for for no. something. No, you're talking about the years in crisis thing. That no, it's a joke. It's not going to be a book. Huh? It's a joke. It's not going to be a book. It needs to be a book. It's not going to be a book. It needs to be a book. So we actually are going to talk around here. Are we crisis. doing that? You, you got to put a spoiler warning here. Yeah. Is this first and then listener questions? Yeah, yeah. We'll okay. do listener questions at the end. So so we all get a chance to read here as a crisis number nine. And look, we're not going to spoil it here. I just, just full on, we're not going to spoil it. Yeah, that's why I can't say what um, I'm saying. But – I did want to have a conversation about Heroes in Crisis, and, and next week we talk a little bit more in depth about it, and has been wrapped up. I'm, I want, I'm curious to hear the internet's perspective, and, and um, some good think piece articles probably come out of this. Um, Tom King is, has been put in an interesting position with Heroes in Crisis, where he uh, we'll we'll talk spoilers up to eight at this point, right? I mean, I think everything yeah. if, if, you, if you haven't read up to eight, I mean, I don't, sorry. Um, Skip ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, message. If you're waiting, <laughs> if you're trade waiting, you'll have to skip. You know, so much of this book has been about um, Wally West, and especially within the last issue or two, we found out so much more about what's been going on yeah. behind the scenes. And 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 I brought this up on Twitter today, especially after reading issue number nine. And I hope people see it through because I think the message is good by the end. Um, that this book is not about. Time travel shenanigans and duplicates and killing heroes and all this stuff. You know, as, as it has become very, you know, very obvious, especially in the last few issues. This book is much more about depression and anxiety and loss. Yeah. Um, and I did get some people tell me like, oh, well, I haven't liked how they've even portrayed that within the series. You have people that are like, you know, fucking uh they they can't deal with the with the you know with the harley poison ivy otp crap you know o- like otp one true pairing they they uh, just it, you know what like the like, fuck one true pairing OTP, man um what the fuck is that let me go to one true pairing what garbage millennial whatever kid talk is this beak 
like here's bullshit. my here's my here's my old man urban dictionary OTP yes. one true pairing your favorite combinations of characters in a fandom yes they're they're OTP uh, um, so they're pissed off because poison ivy gets killed all right they don't like it that Wally's a murderer or that Wally died and now we find out that he's actually a murderer and he's set up so even reading issue eight I was like the fuck is going on in this book like I'm willing to well, give I'm, it the benefit of the doubt I'm reading issue eight going fucking a this is awesome well it was. <laughs> It was pretty jarring because I got to the end of eight and said, okay, look, Wally, I, this doesn't feel like Wally West. This yes. feels like a really crazy ass story. He, 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 his energy goes wild. He kills a bunch of people accidentally. He basically explodes, killing a bunch mm-hmm. of characters. He then goes through this complicated series I mean, to. I mean, I understand you were having flashbacks to Speedball. Oh, yeah, it's a little yeah, Speedball and little, uh, yeah, uh, little, little penance. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a it's a trigger for you there. It is. So um, he very quickly f- to distract while he goes and does some other stuff. He frames Harley and Booster Gold to to set up this whole like mystery while he goes off and to figure it out to go to go figure out what to do. Right. So coming into number nine, I was like, man, I don't fucking know what the hell like how do they how do they deal with this and to me i thought nine and again no spoilers but i thought nine did a good job of defocusing from the the crazy continuity and time travel and all that stuff to go to actually what the book is is actually about yeah and discuss way more the uh the problems and the concerns of of mental health but through the eyes of, of crazy superhero shit. But to not only do that, but to also discuss how to get through it and work your ways through it. So, And I got a few comments from people when I said this online where I was like, you know, I expect just the, the, the people that are mad all the time are going to hate this. Like they hated every issue because they're not reading. I'm, I said subtext and then I replied later. Like it's not even subtext. It's straight up the text of the book. The main focus of the book is this plot of – of of Wally having to deal with with PTSD and and all these problems, and in nine they do I felt a really good job of hammering home uh, uh, the the problems of what the problems that people face, but also a, a, a good kind of path to potentially work through problems. It is still through the guise well, of this crazy superhero story, but I think it 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 spoke to me. As someone who's had anxiety problems and had de- – not as a depression, but has had issues with this in the past, um, I felt the lead-up was interesting. But I just didn't know where they were going with it. Uh, Kevin, I know you said it felt – I didn't want to go straight into the Game of Thrones comparison and obviously no spoils for that either. But OK. So as a preface, yes. I need to reread the whole series. Yeah. I think it's going to read much better. I read nine an hour before we're recording this. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I read number one, what, nine months ago? Right. So right. I would like to sit down now knowing what it's all about because, look, I love the art. Clay yeah. Man is just killing it on this yeah. book. Yeah. I mean, it's so many pages yeah, we, we really are like Clay Man. so, so good. Yeah. I didn't feel like – God, I, I just feel like I want to put 20 asterisks before all no, of yeah, these yeah, comments. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. It's very off the cuff. It's fine. I didn't feel like <laughs> – all of the things we spent time on ultimately went towards paying off what the book was actually about. Right, right. It does do, I feel, a very kind of 90-degree return at the very end to be like, you'll be, but this was never the main story, right? And I think that's intentional. Yes, and I'm not sure. It's intentional. I'm saying it felt on one read, again, this is one month at a time. Yeah very kind of herky jerky in places where I I was up through number 6 7 going WTF is this book even what is even the central story of this yeah 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 like I actually don't know yeah. there's all these pages panels of the characters doing their confessionals right then there's this murder mystery then whoa here's the shining knight on a really cool random page that seems yeah. to have nothing to do with anything yeah 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 and so I just would like now knowing what the ultimate payoff is I would like to sit down and see how it all holds together right. as a package. Right. I, do, I think this would be a great trade read yeah. or a great all-at-once read. I do not think it was a great month-to-month read. 
Well, much like Game of Thrones, which you know, I, I loved this last season, but like if you told me you wanted to give me a whole other season or another handful of episodes of Game of Thrones to flesh stuff out, I obviously would have taken it, right? The last couple pages in this book do very rapidly kind of wrap yep. things up. And again, if you wanted to give me a 10th or through a 12th issue to go more in depth and to do more with it, totally awesome. To me, though, other books will deal with the long-term ramifications of the characters, this is a Wally story at the end of the day. This is sort of, especially in the back half of the book, to me, more. this was much more about his emotional journey dealing with the problems he's had to deal with coming back from Rebirth. I, I don't I have not read uh, Doomsday Clock, but I did flip through it. I'm just saying I don't think it's connected, but it may be a little bit. There's there may be something there that we don't know about yet. I guess still some issues, but but uh, rebirth has been addressed in in Doomsday Clock Ten. Uh, so I I I don't know maybe what the because you, you heard that there was sort of this sort of initial pitch for the story. And then they wanted to do like a murder mystery identity crisis kind of deal. And maybe this somehow kind of goes in between each other and it takes a little bit of both plots and sort of mixes it together. But I I'm, I was worried with the final issue because I didn't know what they were going to do. Because eight leaves off on such a like, what the fuck? What is happening in this book? I didn't dislike it. I just didn't know what, where it was going. I felt nine wrapped up the emotional plot of it very quickly wraps up the plot plot and will now go on to other characters to explore this more. So much like you, I want to reread it. I'll grab the trailer when it comes out. Um, but no, the deluxe has hard. If you were like, well, uh, who knows <laughs> if you're just like, this book is stupid and the plot's stupid and it makes no sense. And I hate it. And you killed Wally and I hate this book and you killed poison Ivy. Look, I don't know that you're going to get anything out of nine. And you will get a little bit, but it's like that's not what the book really has been about. So, so for for me, I read it every every month, and I reread it yeah. every month. So I re- I think I read the first issue like four times, five times, um, and then I it's two or three reads each time. Um, so going into nine. And all the the craziness that happened in eight, and you're just like, all right, how are you going to finish? How are where are we going to go with this? Yep. And the thing is, is this they do a really great job in nine, and I think this is where, like you said earlier, think pieces will probably leave, like shed light on some of this stuff. Um, they do a really great job of bringing it all, you know, back to you know where we are. What's happening? And like you said, yes, it seems very, very rushed at the end. But when I read it, it didn't necessarily feel rushed. It felt like it flowed just how it was supposed to to get us to where Heroes in Crisis is going to leave us, which is going to take us – like something else is going to happen after this. Whether I it's, don't know what though. Whether it's you know another Tom King thing, whether it's something that happens with Wally in, in a flashbook or however this wants to resolve – it's not resolved in Heroes in Crisis. Heroes in Crisis just gets us to this point. And I think that the biggest thing that Tom King brought into Heroes in Crisis was like mental health, how we work through it. How do we, as a society, view mental health? Yeah. Right? And I think it's, it's obviously okay. doing its own, its own weird spin on it. But, but, I, but I again, think it's, it's an interesting concept because it's not something that's usually ever considered in, in superhero comics. But you also oh, have to – Char- Char- tell- Yeah, sorry, Char- Charlie. Char- you also Char- have to tell a story. You can't just sacrifice storytelling right. at the altar of I right. want to give a message about mental health. Right, right. I like the message of the book, but I'm also sitting here thinking like one of the things that made Vision great for me is the fact that it sort of took a character and while it was sort of in the normal Marvel universe, it didn't feel like the Marvel universe – was sort of central around the vision story. Right. Meaning it, it kind of got its messages across. It kind of did its interesting things, but it also didn't feel like it was radically changing the rest of Marvel around it. Right. And you, you look at Mr. Miracle, same kind of thing. It, it takes characters I love and that kind of stuff. That story could happen in the DC universe or outside the DC universe. It didn't really mm. ground itself. What makes 
King's Batman something I love so much is that it fits well within the DC universe for me. And a lot of what you kind of have with the date night and that kind of stuff still feels like main DC you mm. stuff to me. I'm very hesitant around Heroes in Crisis right now because I don't really have a problem with heroes getting help. I don't have a problem with the ideas of stuff that they introduced in Heroes in Crisis. But there's a few ways that it directly impacts the, the main DC universe and the story around the main DC universe that throws me. And one of the things I found interesting is through the entire series, there are certain characters that would show up and you'd kind of almost get a peek into like the confessional yeah. kind of thing. And some of what was said in there for certain characters, I'm like, I don't see that character saying that at all. And those are the low kind of things where I'm like, if this was something completely set up as it's done over here, but like it affected the flash book, it affected the Batman book, it, it affected all this stuff Heroes around it. Heroes of Crisis affected uh, Green Arrow, Red, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Yeah. Um, it affected, like you said, Flash, it affected Titans, um, Batman to an extent. Um, and am I missing any of them? I, I'm not sure that I like the effect this had, especially given the story and the payoff we got. Well, I I feel most of those confessionals, it may not be the character we come to expect, but that's what a confessional is, right? I mean, the idea here is that this is something that they might not confess to the outside world. There was few that I thought were weird. I, I the, Most of them seemed to make sense to me. Like what specifically? Do you remember which one? Uh, <laughs> The problem is, I know some of the ones I want to talk about yes. are from the one I just... Yes. Well, they can go through a lot them. of characters. Because there's some characters in number nine, not to spoil yeah. anything, where it's not even what they said. It's, I can't even picture that character sitting there, like being in any way involved in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing yeah. is, is this is... The characters that are... No, I well, can't say yeah. anything. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> but, Damn it. <laughs> well, I, 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 all I'm basically saying is, I'm not... Yeah. I, as a sort of pocket elseworld kind of story i'm completely on board with heroes in crisis as a main dc title we'll see what comes out of it because in a weird way i like some of the stuff that came out of identity crisis more than identity crisis well and that's why i wanted to have this conversation i didn't want to talk about specifically the 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 plot points and the ramifications of this within the context of these characters going forward i did want to discuss the overall arc of what it became, which was dealing with Wally West's kind of more more personal mental state, especially coming out of – after finding out what happened in She Wait. So I, I would – whether you're – whether you like the end spot for some of these characters – and look, if you're a big Lagoon Boy fan, sorry. He doesn't come back in nine. I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, you said no spoilers. Yes, I, I did. I said I didn't say no spoilers. Uh, or did he? Uh, <laughs> but it was hey, I like Lagoon Boy. Time. I have like every appearance he's ever had, like all four of them in, in, in Young Justice. Um, but if you uh, – I, 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 w- I hope people that have not liked this series but are still continu- continuing with it read number nine and go in with what we said. Don't worry about the continuity. Don't worry about the ramifications or where this goes. But I, but I, I like the message of – how they are trying to deal and help Wally and Wally's personal struggle from a from a, a, a mental point of view, not a physical point of view. So that's all I wanted. That was a long way to get around saying that. But we'll talk more about Heroes in Crisis and Doomsday Clock probably next week and probably Batman uh, last night and Superman Leviathan because holy – effing crap dc you only put out six books this week but you put out four of the top six books of the month so like or four of the top 10 books of the month this week alone hey wildstorm came out yeah we can read it and go what the fuck is this about is that the last issue no there's still a couple left there's still a couple couple left left. didn't mention the wild uh, wildcats the warren ellis is following up with wildcats book so remember there was going to be four wildstorm comics that never happened remember when morrison was going to write a uh, wildcats book Uh, that doesn't count (laughs) With Jim Lee Art? We got like 10 years of Michael Che. Michael Che? No, Michael Cray. Michael, Michael Che, isn't he a comedian? Yeah, Michael Cray. Um, we didn't get any more. But we're getting that Wildcat book, the Cats book. That should be pretty good. Anyway, like I said, long, long way to 
Heroes in Crisis Nine was good. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk more about Heroes of Crisis next week. I'm just waiting for the deluxe size hardcover. But how DC's been doing deluxe size hardcovers? Eh, I'm not even going to wait. I'm going to go pull out all the individual issues and just sit down and reread them because I want to see how it holds together as a overall story. All right, Tyler says we're going to hit some questions here before we get out. Tyler says, uh, Tyler Willits, of course, says, "What is a comic book plot, story, character, or whatever that you will always defend?" No matter how much people trash it. Very good question for talking today about Tom King's Batman and Heroes in Crisis. And I will answer first because I know I've got at least one person at this table that will side with okay. me. Okay. You may be thinking of the same thing I was about if to say. If you talk trash about Graham Morrison and Frank Quietly's new X Men, you need to get the fuck out, okay? Oh, I don't have a problem with that. Quietly is incredible. His art is amazing. His new X Morrison's new X Men stuff was the pinnacle of X Men, and it is it's so it always comes down. Hey, hey, and, Uh-oh. <laughs> I know you're agreeing with me on this, but it's come on, Frank that, Quietly, that, that's, Frank Quietly. That's where we're yeah. gonna, that's where we're going to get the 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 moment, right? The, the, mo- the definitive moments from his run. Defend quietly forever. I love quietly. I cannot believe. I love quietly. Yes. I do not like Morrison's X Men. <laughs> ah, I don't hate it. I, do, I don't hate here. it. I just think it's. Anyway, we don't need to go down that. I will I, defend no matter what. Okay. <laughs> because it's Quentin Choir. Like, I'll ignore the hey, you know what? Scaffer issues. I, uh, ooh. I. And the Igor Cordy issues. The it's, it's, so the premise of his question was you're defending because there's a lot of haters for it. Yeah. Oh, people hate Frank Wyatt. No, no, I know. So I'm trying to think of a series that's controversial or a plot line that's controversial. You know, it, it's. Have weird. you heard of Batman by Tom King or Heroes of Crisis? Oh, yeah, Tom something King? that we haven't already mentioned. <laughs> no, it, I kind of feel like while I, I, most of the stuff that I've felt compelled to defend, opinions have kind of come back around on. Yeah, like I remembered a lot of people were not happy with Onslaught, and I was, <laughs> and now everybody's like, "Oh, Onslaught's great! They should bring back Onslaught." Onslaught is is like uh, rose tinted glasses, I think, for a lot of yeah. people. Where they're like, I hated it at the time. Like, dude, yeah. the Clone Saga trades oh, yeah. that Marvel yeah. was releasing for a while were some of Marvel's bestsellers when they came out. Yeah. But people hated that stuff. But yeah, give it enough time. I understand why someone would not like it, but I will defend Final Crisis. Oh, oh, so good. But I I totally get what it is about that that turns people off, and I can't. I can't argue against that, but I yeah. can make a defense for it. Sure. Uh, I guess for me, it'd be like it'd be Fifty Two. Like people that don't like Fifty Two, just I don't no. like really understand why. Well, I think it maybe the weekly series there were some people off, but I have too much hate for for Fifty Two, New Fifty Two, yeah, New Fifty Two. <laughs> but well, I can't defend Huck and Dove. Yeah, uh, well, no, no one can. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano says, I, "I couldn't even make it past issue one." So, I, what? St- Stefano says, enough. "I couldn't make it past issue one." Double shipping is dead. Thoughts? I mean, we talked about it, but like, I, I, told, I told you my opinion. I love the money, and I love reading comics twice a month. So, yeah. I, I am a fan of double shipping. I, you guys, let I me think, know what you think. I think I liked the, the double shipping on certain titles, um, and I like double shipping because it you. I didn't forget. As much as I did when reading it month to month, yeah. So yeah. I like I like it from that aspect. Well, Tom King's run is a slow burn for some of those issues. Monthly would have been brutal. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is monthly titles. Right now, feel like they come out slow to me. I'm so yeah. used to yeah. getting the next title that it's like Flash came out two weeks later. Oh, here's another Flash. Yeah, I understand yeah. the financial problems that people have with it. Oh no, I I, I, I totally it. get that. I just there's something weird in my head where it's just like, does that mean everything's going to feel like it takes forever now? Or will I just readjust really quickly? Or Because yeah. it is. It's it's really weird how quickly you get used to getting that new issue every two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Not, not really a fan. Yeah. Um, and I would hate to be a creator. Stuff. Like you just burn through your material. Yeah, just super fast. Obviously twice as fast. But yeah, I mean, yeah. think of how far in advance you'd have to plan. Versus yeah. writing a monthly book. I mean, I figure you're at least 24 issues out, probably. Like, plot-wise, right? Yeah. You'd have to yeah. be. So, I don't disagree with sort of the overall statement, but I also kind of feel like 
a lot of writers nowadays have stuff plotted out. Yeah. Like, a lot of the stuff you hear about is, like, I have the next two years' worth of stories sure. already yeah, 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 plotted. Yeah. Like, I understand from the artist perspective, but that's why yeah, they have yeah. a lot more rotating artists and that kind of stuff. And from that perspective, I think going back to monthly to have a more consistent artist on a title might be a a better long-term thing for trades and that kind of stuff. Well, we talked about with Marvel when – um just the amount of content they're putting out, right? 120 books or whatever. Marvel doesn't have 60 really good creative teams, let alone 120 <laughs> really good creative teams, right? I think with double shipping, you can get those people in line as long as you have them sort of set up. But I, I think it's tougher. Well, with Batman, it was like you had Clay Man, you had... Um, he, he had his uh, four or Lee five Week, artists. Lee Weeks came on for a little bit. Yeah, like you yeah. had Tony Daniel was Tony doing Daniel, some stuff. And he's doing the car and arc. Um, but, but there is tough. You know, do you have... A hundred top tier artists, because writers can crank out four books or four issues in a month. They can, they don't, not a lot do, but they can, right? Do you have a hundred, a hundred and twenty artists that can do good work? It, it, it's not that many. There's not that many. In the yeah, field, unfortunately, well, in style for interior. In style yeah. and, has to stay somewhat similar. Yeah. And as I said, I think from a trade paperback and collection perspective having a more consistent art style yep. helps yep. Chris Bunch says do you think stores ordered enough of that Superman Leviathan special that comes out tomorrow Mott, his new store said they didn't order many but it seems like it's supposed to be a big issue Chris you know me of course I ordered I actually bought my order uh, post post getting to, to read some of the preview pages I think this is going to be a big issue, especially coming in with Leviathan when the series hits. I think people are going to come back for this. I think people, when that Lois and Jimmy Olsen book hits, they're going to come back for this. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ordering for a couple months of sa- month of sales because I, I expect. So you know what that means, back. Chris? Just give us a call and we can get you a copy. Yeah, if you if you guys sold out, go to comicsconspiracy.biz. Happy to ship one over to you. So we got a big stack of them. I, I will say. The Spendis' action stuff that he's been doing recently oh, is some of the blowing. best uh, best Bendis that I've read in, I don't know, a good 10 years or See, something See, if only like Bryce that. listened to this, he could hear us talking so much stuff about Brian Michael Bendis at DC yeah. and not at Marvel. Um, but, God, oh, my God, action has been just – every issue is better than the previous. Action has been fucking just, just another level. I, I, can't believe, I can't believe how good Action Comics has been. Yeah. Casey's, it's nothing oh. like like there's no other Superman story arc that I feel like I can directly be like if you like this story arc you should pick no it it I would compare it to other non Superman books yeah, before yeah, I would yeah, yeah. compare it to a Superman books yeah, well and with Leviathan too it's like it's like man we have like You're doing all this. of my favorite characters Manhunter Bones yeah. the Dio <laughs> Spiral Checkmate, uh, Checkmate. oh yeah oh. Yes, Force X oh yeah. yes it's just like. <laughs> This is what I need this. Yeah, I mean... It, it, Argus is in there too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, the easy one to go for is if you picked up the previous, like, Checkmate or Chase series. Yeah, like, it, it's yeah. very Chase reminiscent too. of that yep. stuff. Yep, very... Uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm so excited. Question. So, uh, oh, yeah. The question. So excited. Casey says, the Neil Gaiman show Good Omens comes out on Friday. Is anyone looking forward to it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, <laughs> I don't have to, I have so <laughs> many shows. I forgot Good Omens was so soon. I thought it was seriously like end of the year or something. No, it's like the end of the month. Swamp Thing and Good Omens both come out this week. What, what, the same day. What world do we live in? I'm assuming Good Omens is just going to drop all of it at once, yeah, too. I, good yeah, Omens I think so. Open. Oh, we had some sad news for the tick, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what that last Sorry, week. Charlie. You and didn't you, get your reaction. Uh, yeah. Not too surprising, though, unfortunately. It had been a while since we heard anything. Well, when stuff like this drops, they don't always, like, say, renewal right away. But yeah. I'm I'm very disappointed, and I'm even more disappointed because it was a streaming service, and yeah. I don't know if... I haven't heard of a drop by one streaming service picked up by another streaming service. Sure, it happens, but yeah. I'm hoping... Did they release DVDs or Blu-rays or anything? No, not yet. Man, that's digital content, man. Once it's gone, goodbye. 
Uh, I'm very excited for Good Omens. I I don't know when I'll get did around. Did you read the book? I haven't even read. Yeah, yes, I did. Holy That's, shit! It's probably the last Fucking book I read. I think I read flash. it when it came out in 1988 or whatever <laughs> the hell. But no, I don't know. I I read it in the 90s sometime. But who's uh, the other author on it? Uh, Terry Pratchett. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I should still have my copy. Um, I think. Did you get it signed? No, no, no. Um, I picked it up. Over, so literally. I picked it up and worked at uh, uh, Borders. Uh, bar- b- Crown Books. Crown Books. There you go. Yes. There you go. Oh, Not Borders. that's a throwback. Yeah, Crown Books. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Theotis. Theotis? Yeah, I like that name. Theotis. says, even with the addition of the miniseries, you, you used to feel cheated by Tom King's removal from the main title. And we kind of talked around that a little bit. Personally, no. As long as yeah, I mean, it, it, we get his whole story. Yeah, yeah I'm... I'm- I'm curious to see how I feel a year and a half from now, basically. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to not like it when it comes to the deluxe size hardcover and I have Batman volume this, Batman volume this, Batman volume this, Batman Catwoman. That's why you just wait for the Tom King Batman <laughs> omnibuses. Shut up. I well, well, picked one and I stuck with it. Well, think about two. The, the difference between Batman and R.I.P., Batman and Robin, and then the return of Bruce Wayne and Final Crisis. I mean, these are all distinct stories, right? Yeah. There's a very good chance that his run on Batman Catwoman is going to be this sort of like, you know, this is the sort of wrap up in the end of of his major story arc, but it, it's but it could be a standalone kind of love adventure story of Batman and Catwoman. So I also think because of the way they're sort of doing that, calling it Batman and Catwoman means it's probably going to be very character driven, which yeah. is one of his strengths. And finishing up, if 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 City of Bane is the end of the Bane arc that's basically been in place from the very first issue, right, with Gotham and Gotham Girl, then it, again. It might also kind of make sense for it to be its own thing. So yeah. it doesn't bother me. Uh, he also says, do you expect Tomasi's detective run to continue having a Damien in the storylines? Uh, or do you see uh, it ending after this arc? No, I think Damien's going to stick Damian around in detective. Yeah. 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 And that's that detective is where we're getting that Spectre story. So, oh, God, I love Damien. And Tomasi does such a good Damien. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Um. Stephanie says, I just want to say I only just listen to the Endgame episode. Oh, we're um, sorry. She just finished it. Uh, Wait, sorry. <laughs> I said she. Did you say Stephanie? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and, and, and just to, just to the, the Bryce Larson part, so it's almost done. Uh, I have a ton of fun arguing with my radio and headphones. I've gotten looks from coworkers and strangers. I totally agree. Oh, the only reason you're reading this is because she's a great With man. Ryan Higgins. Oh, God. Okay, and the I'm time leaving. travel theories. You're shut up. <laughs> No, and what to mention? You're wrong. Steve is you know what? Wrong. When you set up a burner Thank account, you. don't make it a female <laughs> name because it stands out too much. <laughs> Morrison you. fan one says Ryan Higgins knows exactly what he's talking about. Speedball's number one yeah. super fan. Uh, that Ryan Higgins man sure is amazing and sexy, even sexier than Bryce Larson. Um, no, uh, thank you. And I've had, I, I have stop. talked, I've Just talked stop. to multiple people. Just stop about the. Just stop. Uh, uh, the Nobody time about the the old Steve stuff in Endgame uh, that 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 agree with with me and the writers of the movie, not the directors. So so I'm um, f- f- thank you. Um, oh, thank God we're done with that. Guy. Number one Brock Sager fan oh, Norman. Shoot. I need to follow that guy. <laughs> I don't know if he's a joke or I, I think he's either. serious. Mm, um, who knows? It's Bryce. You know it's Bryce. Yeah, it he is. says um, uh, with double shipping ending. Is this when DC? Moves to four ninety nine price point on their popular titles, including Batman. Uh, no, DC no, has. DC will draw the line at three ninety nine for a little while. DC has always been the last. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have you have Tarot and you have Spawn. You have these little one offs, but company wide, they have always been the last to raise their price. Yeah. Um, Marvel has generally been the first. Marvel and IDW, I think, both very quickly. Have risen their uh, prices in the past. Dark Horse t- tends to hold off. Image is kind of in the middle. Image is image is all over the place because I it, I, it, I think it also depends on the creator. Because I know Saga was what two ninety nine for that ginormous oversized number one issue. Yeah, and and, and Saga can yeah again you're gonna have books like Saga that will do whatever it wants to yeah. do, but you're not gonna have too many. I don't think we're gonna see four ninety nine from Marvel next year. More likely, yeah. yeah. DC no. I think I don't from DC so. we'll see stuff like Doomsday Clock, like the miniseries. I think they'll they'll do it four ninety nine. 
Now they have their variant covers. Yes. Which are going to continue. They're going. I don't know if it's every month. I don't know what the plan is, but they are doing those cardstock special variant covers that are four ninety nine. That could be the test, right? Yeah, but again, it's it, it's a test, but it's cardstock. It's different. It it's, costs it, more. Like it's, it's different that. I format. can understand. Yeah. I'm going to hate the fucking sales chart numbers when those come out. That's the big question because if we do what Marvel, what Marvel, or sorry, what Diamond has done in the past, it is going to split variant covers out of the sales charts. So all of a sudden, every DC book is going to drop their variant cover numbers, and all the DC books will quote unquote plummet in the sales because the variants are stripped out. You know, one thing I can't wait though is to be able to tell how much did this cover sell versus this cover. There's been a lot of push for that in the industry. Because you have books like Red Sonia that has like 24 covers on whatever and it sells 5,000 copies and you're like, how's the math on that work? You know, like there's a lot of people that want that and that would also really change up the top 10 as far as Marvel goes yeah. because clearly books that have like 15, 20 variant covers, yeah. none of those will hit the top 10, right? I mean, the main cover on one book might, but well, because the thing on is, top is, of the is if you, I, I think the biggest thing is removing the store exclusive covers. Yeah, removing yeah. those store exclusive covers, I think, is the is the big key thing because that's what drives those books to jump over a hundred thousand, under over <laughs> two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, that's it, the it adds big on push. tens of thousands of copies. Because I mean, yeah. you as a store, well, you we're have talking to about order... Immortal Hulk the other week, right? I mean, it doubled in sales, and a lot of that's from those store covers yeah. from that issue. It's from Brandon. He says, serious question. Well, they're all serious questions. Not not all the time. He says, do you happen to know... anything serious. Do you happen to know the first time DC foreshadowed Infinite Crisis? I know there was the one shot with 10 Core, but I'm wondering if there were any seeds planted in the ongoing series. I, as far as I know, you have infinite the Countdown to Infinite Crisis one shot. You have the Ark and Justice League. And you have the Wonder Woman, uh, Maxwell Lord stuff. That's... Yeah, but if talking it, about the first time, it's just the countdown. It's just, it's just countdown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if there was, I don't believe there was any would, hint of talk this about stuff. talk about DC giving a good price point for something oh, like dollar. that book was a dollar and it was huge. So one of my favorite single issues of all time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, no, uh, uh, none of that stuff was was really uh, 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 kind of led to because prior. kind of the premise of it was there's a bunch of things that all accumulate at once. At once, right, right. right. So it's not like something where you could see like where they used to put little silhouette of the monitor yeah. before <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah, crisis. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's not like a it's not like a Jeff Johns build up to an event. Yep. Uh so this comes from Xavier Institute student. He's got a question about the X Men. What is a surprise. This is this a prices burner yeah. account? I think so. <laughs> he says, Do you think Hickman's uh uh House of X and Power of House of X and Power of Ten is what I've I've been told it is. It's Power of Ten, not House of Ten. Um, we'll feature a ton of mutants or just the mutants featured in this photo. And, of course, that's the big House of X, Power of X, uh, a photo that has Magneto and all the regular mutants. No, nah, I think it's – I mean for the main book, I, I think that's the team. That Those are the people. I don't think they'll have other characters. They might uh, later, but – Kitty Pryde's pregnant. Is, is she? I don't know. Is that the big news? Uh, is that the event that's going to change everything? The most important <laughs> pa- is a page. Have you panel? seen that page too? It's a page of. So they posted the page with no dialogue. It's yeah. Like seriously, she's. It, it's, she has to be pregnant. Is that Kate? I don't think that's Kate that's Pride. Kate Pride. People think that's Moira Mattaggart. I, I don't. That tells you how. <laughs> You don't even know who the character is. It's just it's just like deadpan face of Professor Xavier, deadpan face of Moira Taggart, deadpan face of Professor Xavier, deadpan face of Moira Taggart. You have to remember he's shocked put, face. He, he of, puts his hand. He puts sure. his finger, he puts his fingers up shocked, his head. Shocked face of Professor Xavier, deadpan a face baby of Moira Taggart. Mentally, and that is the most important scene in all of X Men comics ever. You got me, Marvel. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know what could possibly be on that page. It's been a dream the whole time. Mutants yeah. never existed. You never left. You never left uh, 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 apo- or, uh, Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. Of it's all. We- yeah. House of M. House of M is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah. even that wouldn't work because those are tied to a specific series. This is the most important of all time. So it's got to transcend even like House of M I don't know. and Apocalypse. I don't know. He's just going to realize that every powered individual in the Marvel Universe is really a mutant. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Peter Blanco says, what's more annoying than comic book haters thinking their frivolous complaints have any impact on hiring and firing decisions? Peter X. Blanco, you've been reading a lot of internet the last few weeks between Game of Thrones and Tom King's Batman. Uh, man. Ryan's opinion on it, time travel. Is, like, is there anything worse than fans of things? They're just the fans worst. Fans suck. Fans really are the worst. No, 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 no wait, wait. Fans just, aren't bad. Like, you're not course, bad. Of course I'm joking. You're not bad. You're not bad. Of course bad. I'm joking. Internet fans are the worst. Okay, so wait. Hold on. So you pull a gem out of the timeline. Uh, you said it's got to. Got to. All well, I'll saying, explain all, this to me. So it splits off to a separate... All I'm saying is just <laughs> unclench everyone. Let these stories play out. And look, if you hate Game of Thrones and you feel like you wasted the last eight years of your life, what the hell were you doing in the past eight years? Nothing but watching Game of Thrones? Like, live your life. You know how many shows I've I mean, watched? People the, watch. The, I mean, I've watched found, every season of Dexter. They found Starbucks cup that fast. They found that water bottle fast. Like, I've watched every season of Dexter. It was not great the last few seasons. <laughs> I still haven't even watched the final one. You know, I mean, hear. I hear it's so just, bad. I'm like. Remember the first four and be done <laughs> but, with but it. But you definitely sent death threats to the creators, right? Oh, well, well obviously. Of Good. Course, yeah. Of course. I mean, yeah, that's just yeah. what you do. Right. Uh, right. Because it's the internet. It's anonymous. You know what? I really disliked the first couple episodes of Iron Fist. And you know what happened? I got really high on prescription drugs <laughs> and finished watching it. And I was like, it was actually okay. You know? <laughs> I kind of came around your back to problem. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched all of Iron Fist and all of Luke Cage. I was like, you know what? <laughs> you were laid I, out. I couldn't move for a week. <laughs> like, that's oh, the only way to watch it. Let's watch Iron Fist. It was okay, you know? I, I, I came around on it. <sighs> you know? You just... Just do a lot of opioids and just be no, okay with we're it. Not, we're not advertising okay. the opioid it's use just on this fine. show. You can, you can, you know what? Tom King's run of Batman. And you hate it. You hate. Guess what? Go read some other Batman comic. Come back. It's he's gone. He's off the book. Time passes so fast these days. Cherish the things you love. Don't worry about the things you hate. Before you know it, you're going to be that crotchety old man back in my day when things were great. Man, just, you, just, you do such a great impersonation of yourself just, now. Just get over it, guys. Just get over it. Now, internet people are the worst. It's, it's so bad. It's so bad. I mean, I will troll Superboy Prime to the end of my days, but, you know, that's that's targeted hate. That's all right. That's all right. But you're there to balance it out, right? Uh, number one Brock Sager fan, Norman, once oh, again. again, asks... Nice. <laughs> Will you be ordering as many copies of Marvel Comics 1000 as you did for Action 1000 and Detective 1000? Now, look, number one Brock Sager, Sager fan, Norman. There's a possibility that I will, oh, in which case no. Marvel has some crazy, ridiculous deal where they offer the book for 50 cents a copy with a ton of variant covers. So you hashtag, can actually charge what it's supposed to be, two ninety nine. Hashtag love the Blake. And I can just make a buttload of money and give a... Th- Two cases of this thing away for freaking comic book day next year. Dude, what's the cover on this? Did they announce the price? I mean, nine ninety nine. Yep. Uh, did you catch? Did you see what the they they have to edit one of the variant covers? Did I you see did that? see that. Did you what? guys catch Why? this? No. Yeah. So they had a collage of variant covers of all these scenes from all these different Marvel comics. <laughs> they had a scene from a DC comic on the what? cover. I think it was from Earth Two, wasn't it? Yep, it was. Uh, it was two male characters kissing on the cover. Oh, I right? saw something on that. Yeah. Like I didn't. And read it's the it. Earth Two Alan Scott. The Alan I don't Scott and his boyfriend. I right? don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they thought it was from. Uh, uh, it was X Men Fifty. Like, r- like right, the Star astonishing X Men. I, I don't. Son- who the fuck are the gay characters that get married? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Quicksilver, Quicksilver, and no, not so no. Quicksilver. No, Sunfire and. <laughs> I can't remember who it is. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. An astonishing X Men. Yes, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Bryce is screaming, or he would be if he was listening. <laughs> um, uh, I they clearly just grabbed the wrong clip art file and threw it on there, or maybe they were like, "Oh, this will work." But <laughs> that is funny. Okay, that's really good. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Um, yeah. I, well, what's I, I funny is, is out of everything on that that cover, but no, we will not one, be ordering as many copies as Marvel Comics one thousand. That one, not as action one thousand, not as act detective one, possible action. No, that one stands out. Like it's weird. when you look at that image, it's a very large. That image stands on. out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing else stands out except that. Well, I'm sure their idea was 
this is we won't get a representation on here. We're going to make these characters larger than a lot of the other characters on here. But it is like <laughs> it's from a DC comic. So, uh, what are That's you going to do? That's Nicola Scott art. Is it? Is, yeah. it, is that what it is Earth from? It's from that Earth Two one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, she tweeted asking if she was going to get paid. Oh, no, did she <laughs> yeah. really? Oh, nice, nice, nice. Well, it's just funny because it's like that art is just stands out. It's so nice <laughs> compared to all the other Marvel garbage. Not really. There. Not there. specifically. Bryce will hear that eventually. Not specifically comics, but I'll, I'll, I'll allow it from Joshua. What Disney animated movie actually needs to be remade in live action? We're getting quite a few. It was Big Zero. Zero. Big, big Goose Egg from Kevin down there. The end. Jungle Book was the one for me. It was fantastic. Just because that original is just like a series of musical scenes, basically. Yeah. And so it was – there was a lot of room to stretch. Yeah. These newer ones just look like literal translation of the animated movie. Lion King's going to do real good. It's going to be really big. Well, how did Aladdin do? Good. good. It way it outstripped expectations. I think I think expectations were like 80 or 90 million. did like 116. Yeah. It Aladdin did really well. Uh, Disney movie that they need to make a live action. Oh, dude. Give me all of them. I don't care. If they're good, they're good. Like Dumbo. Look, Tim Burton's <laughs> one of my favorite directors of all time, except anything he's done in the last 15, 15 years. <laughs> I, this is just like a hard stop after like Mars Attacks. Uh, well, was was Big Fish after Mars Attacks? Yes, Big Fish was good. And then he had the uh, everything after that was not good. The Corpse Bride. You don't like the Corpse Bride? Oh, was that after that too? Yeah. Okay, Corpse Bride was was good. Okay, so what would you want anyway. to see Disney live action? What would you want? Well, to see? so I love the Maleficent, right? And I'm really excited for the second Maleficent. But I actually would want. Like Sleeping Beauty, it's a very different. Maleficent is not Sleeping yeah. Beauty. It's a very different movie. Um, I think a Sleeping Beauty, like straight, like just that. But, but I love. After oh, seeing Aquaman, I want to see him do really Little good. Mermaid. Oh, they will, they will. Yeah. And I think you know some of their kind of duds. Atlantis, Treasure Planet. <laughs> I think there's <laughs> there's a chance to do some really cool <laughs> stuff with the ideas. Yeah, and just ditch the the original um, concept. What about a live action Rescuers? Ah, that'd be cool. Yeah. A lot of my favorite Disney's are already live action of those old movies, so yeah, I'm yeah. kind of at a lot. Jungle Book was my pick, and I got it. Give me a redo uh, again, not animated, but give me a redo with Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, screen. that's like what. A, I, well, that's like a what modern, I was, yeah. yeah, a modern take could be awesome. David Fincher was going to do that a few years ago. Was he really? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, I'll take it. So I don't really have an answer, but if I had to give an answer, <laughs> I'd just go with something completely weird like Fantasia. I, I mean, that'd be neat. That'd be the, I, that'd be, be the very different. Opioid. You'd have yeah. to be on opioids for that. I, I mean, y- y- you really couldn't do a live I action know. Fantasia. Oh, I know what I want, Ryan. That's why I, I chose the one where I'm like, I have no clue how you could even yeah. well, again, try and do that. Like, like Lion King is 100% CG. It's not yeah. really a live action movie. Yeah. Yeah, Jungle yeah. Book is 99% right. CG. Yeah. All right. But, have they done Snow White? No, Snow White. No, no, they did Cinderella. Yeah, which yeah. I actually, the only one I haven't seen. I haven't seen one. Cinderella. I heard, I heard it's really good. I haven't seen Cinderella. Well, got my pick. Going off your Facebook profile picture. Yeah. Oh. Wind in the Willows. Oh, yeah. But again, live action would be fucking weird. I know. That's what would be so cool. <laughs> you want some like uh, what's the what's the fabulous Mr. Fox? Like get some weird like puppet version. <laughs> no, if you're doing that, you need to do Robin Hood. Oh, just just oh, with the fox, furry, furry, yeah. furry, furry nightmare, or furry dream. You kidding yeah. me? Um. Now I want to see a CGI Mr. Toad with those big blinking eyes that look walking around in a, like a waistcoat and a tie. <laughs> Didn't we already get that Mr. from Toad. what's her name in Not Mr. Toad um, Force Awakens? Oh, Ma- Maz Kanata. Oh, yeah. It Kana. would be kind of like that, yeah. Um, last one from um, Theodos. Uh, as someone who owns a few omnibuses, I've always wondered why they aren't available. But they aren't available digitally. As a shop owner who does digital comics as well, would you find digital omnibuses marketable to customers? Digital trade paperbacks are a weird concept to me in the first place because they already exist in as like single issues. You don't need a digit. You don't need six issues of whatever, and then a trade paperback. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's really weird that they market cut, them as two separate items. So I agree it's weird that the market them is two different items. I'm surprised it's not just buying bundles. Right, right. So you're but buying the said, Hush bundle. It's the trade paperback. It's six issues. It's the same content. It's the same thing. Some omnibuses have made it out in like 
digital form. The as- epics have. But again, it's, it's, the, it's just yeah. the single issues. It's yeah. the weird – I don't get it. Well, the thing is, is so the, the difference on digital is the single issues are one file. I – and they they yes. haven't. They haven't. Clear, yes. Wait. No. There's a difference. But, but they haven't linked in e- like an easy transition over to the next one yet. But you can. You just have it. I know you can. But with the graphic novel, they it's just a larger file that you just just keep going. You don't have to do all the work. I mean, they already feels, have links at the end that will be like read the next issue. But like, it just feels weird for me. What I've always kind of wanted, just. Speaking from like the digital perspective, I've always kind of wanted the if you own all the issues, you also get the trade. Yeah. Or those that way, if you want to read it as sort of like all collected as a trade, rather yeah. like but it's that the for same me. Thing. Well, I don't... That, that's why, as I said, I just I would like it to be more about the content, and then once you have the content. You can read in whatever form you want. I only you can buy digital it. absolute. I only. I only buy absolute digital comics because they're oversized. Oh, wait. So that's why I have this. My huge mentality. Tablet. My mentality <laughs> on it tablet. is: if you own the issues, I mean, like completely own the issues, you can choose. I want to read it in sort of standard trade form or. Omnibus form, especially because. But what's the difference? It's just the, next issues. If you no, get cover art, I guess is that the only. To difference? me, it would be the way the issues are bundled, because a lot of times when it comes to like an omnibus, take the Green Lantern omnibuses, they will go from Green Lantern to Blackest Night yeah, to this true. in it's order, true. yeah, and that kind of thing. So I, I'm perfectly there's, there's fine ma- with there's, a. There's mapping. I want to read and... this bundle of issues versus this bundle of issues. That way, you can go. I just want to read the main thing, or I want to read all this stuff yeah, chronologically, true. that kind of thing. Well, and the other thing, too, is, is yeah. when you start to get digital files, like I have 65 or I have 80 some odd issues of Tom King's Batman, or I have 10 trades. Like, there's some people that don't want all of these things, they want more streamlined. But I think there's ways for them to just kind of compile them within comiXology or digital reader to just say hey it's you know yeah they can do that but that would require them to actually put want to put effort into you just put, you just put tom king's uh, batman read start <laughs> one button yeah you know, i mean you know. most of this stuff you you do exactly that you look up the series and then it will yeah. go from one issue to the next well, and if you're missing <clears throat> an issue it'll be like buy this issue and you're like or they no, can have I just a, wanted to read this story. Now leave me alone. Yeah, they can have a thing that's like the complete Jeff Johns Green Lantern with all all the Green Lantern core and all that. And if you buy the bundle for five hundred or you know fifty, oh, you know, I don't know what two hundred bucks or whatever, you get all those individual issues. But then if you want to read them, it's like well, you don't have the next issue in the arc. You just skip it and you go on to Green Lantern. Or if you read them, you could choose how to read them. But to me, it's if you yeah, I think if you buy the trade, you should get the singles. If you buy the singles. And you have all the singles that equal a trade, you should also have the trade. But it's weird that they're two separate files to me. Yeah. So a digital – to get back to his question, a digital omnibus is just like, oh, it's just the issues. I don't – It's a bundle. It is yeah. a little weird, especially because from a storage perspective, it would also take up less space for them maintaining the files. Yeah. It's weird. We'll see. Digital comics. They'll figure something out, I'm sure. That's it. That's our podcast. Huh. Not bad. Good time. Average time. Not too long, not too short. But we had a great first 17 minutes. We did. We did. Hopefully. What would be too short? Huh? What would be, you said, not too long, not too short. <laughs> we've had. If, if Endgame is too long. We've had sub one hour episodes. Like, so, like, like. Yeah, the, the, the old school ones yeah, were yeah, under yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah. We've had yeah. Geekbox episodes that have been like 59 minutes recently, and I'm like, really? That's it? We're done? No, that's fine. That's fine. One hour and a half. It's a bummer sweet spot, and that's we're a little over that, so I think that's good. Let's wrap up here. Well, 17 minutes don't count, so we're under it. We have to thank our good friends at Impact Theory Comics. Make sure you go check out their book, Neon Future. Julian Titus has a Nerds Without Pants podcast at Pixelbit.com. Jody Lawson is canon the Tri-Comics, anthology at Tri-Comicstudios.com. Sam Che, Craig Anderson over at CraigPAnderson.com. Joe Duff, Andrew Melson, uh, whoa, Andrew Melson, Andrew <laughs> Nelson Mendez. A recovery of an anime junkie podcast, Paige Turner's a comic book podcast at pagetunerspodcast.libson.com. And Tyler Willits over at Thursday Thunderdome. That's Thursday T Dome on Twitter and Thursday Thunderdome.com. I feel like I'm like, can't get my words out here at the end. 
Don't forget to go to ComicConspiracyPodcast.com, Geekbox.net, and iTunes, where you can find all our previous episodes, as well as on YouTube.com slash Comics Conspiracy. Of course, those long-form questions can come to the Comic Conspiracy at Geekbox.net. If you want to back us on Patreon, wherever Patreon uh, dot com slash comic conspiracy. Of course, digital dot comics conspiracy dot business where you can buy your digital comic books and graphic novels and omnibuses and trade paperbacks. In whatever all, form you want. They're all different for some reason. Uh, and if you want those physical comic books, if your store sold out of Superman Leviathan Rising Special this week, you can get it at Comics Conspiracy dot biz. Go on there and pick up a copy from did us. You, did you put a limit on them yet? No, 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 it's fine. We we have plenty. Go crazy. Conspiratorbrock.com, that's Brock's blog, video pull list, and unboxing videos. You can watch some videos I, over there. I'm starting to do two-minute reviews. Nice, nice. I did. Uh, I have two up, one for six days, the Vertigo straight-to-graphic novel, um, yeah. one by Robert Vendetti. And, uh, you see Rubber I, Vendetti? Huh? You see Rubber Vendetti? No, Robert Vendetti. Robert Vendetti. Um, I heard and Rubber then I Vendetti. Did, uh, and then I did a... a, a, a it's technically longer, but I did the two minute review on um, the Mara uh, tiebreaker. Oh, cool. And uh, uh, Under the Moon, a Catwoman tale. Catwoman. So the, those yeah, are the yeah. two. Heard lots of swearing in that Catwoman one. Not good for your teens. Not good for your your <laughs> middle school like, kids. The the parents is, are getting mad. The thing is, is it's it, it's their teen line. Like it, I'm, they I'm have joking. a I'm they have a like joking. adult themes or they have very teenage themes <laughs> in these books. Yeah. I mean, Mara's whole thing in it is she's going to kill Arthur. Like. Right, right. Um, but no, I did a, I did a two minute review on those kind of as DC's ink yeah. line. Yep. Those are the two that have come out from that. Yep. We're going to get some more going forward. Cool. Um, but yeah, you can check those out. Cool. Make sure you go over to Wanderers in the fourth dimension. That's Charlie's Dr. Who podcast. Check that out. And Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill art. That's my wife, Leanne. Uh, you can pick up some artwork from her on there. She just did her second Haunted Mansion tarot card. Yeah, yeah. She's been doing some, really good. Yep, some tarot cards based on the Haunted Mansion. So pretty cool prints. Small prints. You can check those out. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can follow all of us. Ryan Higgins Ryan. That's myself. Brock is Brock Sager. Uh, where are we? Charlie's Insanity and Chaos. Kevin Sharp is that Kevin Sharp. And the store is Comics Con Store. Please give us all a follow on Twitter. Stay for the biting political commentary. Uh, Geekbox, Comedy Button, Manga Machinations, and Infinite Bend are a few other things that our friends do. You should go check those guys out. And that's going to do what it. What does Kevin do? Kevin. Kevin, uh, you've got to plug your thing again. Way to put him on the spot. As uh, what am I plugging? Uh, whatever you would like. You want to plug something? Stuff. Oh, my interview series. Yes, fanbasepress.com. The series is called Between the Panels. And... Um, yeah, I'm. You know what? I'm kind of fried mentally. I can't even remember now because I've been looking at a spreadsheet with so many names on it that I honestly can't remember who's coming up um, tomorrow as of when we're recording this. But anyway, yes, it started off. The whole purpose of the series was to spotlight indie creators who people might not have heard of, and now it's kind of morphing into something bigger and different. And I'm just kind of going along for the. I mean, I'm not going to say to somebody like Joel Jones, "Sorry, you're too famous. I can't talk to you." So I'm just. Riding it where it goes. Nice. Fantastic. We'll check those out. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll catch you next week.